host Spencer Christian here in the kitchen with two of my favorite chefs, uh, Le Cordon Bleu trained chef John Sudini and sous chef Arbel Mosqueda. Great to see you guys again. And we are pairing whatever you're cooking today with wonderful wines from Napa Valley, Trujillo wines, which consistently win high accolades, uh, ratings in the mid 90s from uh, wine reviewers like wine enthusiasts and others. So John, what are we preparing today and why is this food going so well with this wine? All right, so we are going to prepare a filet mignon today. Mm -hmm. So your go-to wine to pair with cabs are usually ribeye, right? Because right. it's big, fatty, and chewy. Uh, but this wine here is actually from his three vineyards. Uh, so you have St. Helena, Howe right. Mountain, and Rutherford. So you have a perfect harmony and balance of all three areas. A blend of three distinctively mm. different terroirs. Exactly. Yeah. Distinct within Napa itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it has the balance. It has that cocoa dust from Rutherford, it has the big pepperiness from Howell, and it has that smooth, easy-going finish of the St. Helena Healy. You uh, can actually pick that up in the nose, you know, oh, yeah, the, 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 the Howell Mountain spiciness. I mean, this, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal wine. Uh, so we want to do something really fun with it today. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to do a little filet mignon, which I think will really accent the, the elegance of the wine itself. Right, right. Okay, so filet mignon, and there are going to be some other items on the plate that also will um, participate in the concert of flavors, <laughs> right? Of course, of course. So the first thing I did was actually sous vide, uh, which is French for under pressure, yeah. uh, the filet mignon, so it's... Fancy guy, <laughs> he knows his French. It's more of a temperature you might appreciate, so yeah. I cooked it to already a perfect to medium rare. Right. How hot does the pan need to be when you put it in there? Uh, you want it to be almost smoking. Right. You don't want to start a fire, but you, you want some heat. Right. You definitely want some heat um, to it. So while this steak, which is already pretty par cooked from the sous vide, we are going to go ahead and prep up a little bit as well. So from the different vineyards, I'm getting some earthy tones, uh -huh. from the, and earthy pepperiness from the Howell Mountain. Right. So of course, we have a nice peppercorn blend going straight on the steak. And I also have some wild mushrooms from the Petaluma area, some King Trumps to bring out more of that earthy terroir to it. Uh, there you go, exactly. And how long, roughly, will the, will the fillets need to cook before they're well, ready to pair with the wine? Since we sous vide it, we sous vide it for about one hour at 130 degrees. Mm -hmm. So with that, they're going to cook up much faster. We're just putting a nice hard sear on it. Got it. Arbel, did you taste these wines too? Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I think right, yeah. Yeah, these wines are phenomenal. Um, you know, they're just, they're so rich and full of love. Yeah. When you drink them. The first time I tried them in the taste room was just. Oh, by the way, I should world. mention we are in the kitchen of the vintner himself. This is Michael Trujillo's kitchen, which he's been uh, kind enough to let us use. Yeah. Since we're <laughs> tasting his wines. <laughs> right. And it's a beautiful kitchen as well, and it works really well for what we're doing today. Uh, it's not often I get to hang out with a legend. Uh, legendary winemaker's kitchen. So right. it's, oh, I thought you were going to say legendary honor. host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that as well. No, uh, it's kidding. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so these are going to wow. sear up. Oh my quick. gosh, the the aromas coming out of that pan are amazing. Yeah, you know we like to, uh, you know, of course, uh, marinate season and, and before we sous vide, so all the flavors stay inside it. Right. It keeps our temperature, keeps all the juices inside. Um, you know, one thing I really love about filet and a good balanced Cabernet is it's all about the components that go with it as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's all going to bring it around, but just, uh, it's true. you know, it, filet is a great meat. It's not overly rich. It's not over the top. It's, it's awesome. And the aromas now that I'm getting just sort of scream for it, a nice, rich, but well-balanced Cabernet like this. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it is beautiful. It looks like a see. pretty simple preparation, you know, it's, it it's is. easy to do at home, right? Mostly, if you don't have an immersion circulator, which is yeah. what makes your sous vide, not the end of the world, right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. You do need to cook a little more in the pan, or you sear it off hard and you finish it in the oven. But, you know, you should never, you never try to overdo yourself when you're pairing at home with your right. wife. All right, so as this is finishing up and searing, mm -hmm. um, we're going to go ahead and pass over our wonderful puree of... Ah, now what is this? This is celery root okay. and some butter beans. Whoa, so I love we, butter beans. We braise them both together. 
Uh, you know, celery root is one of those really cool notes you get in well-structured cabs, especially from that Rutherford. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of taste that in the terroir. So I wanted to play with that particular vineyard a little bit here. And, and what about the butterbeans? What is it about the butterbeans that makes them uh, compatible with everything else here? You know, it's so rich and smooth. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, it, it, it's a little buttery. Yeah, uh, so buttery, there you go. It's buttery, but it doesn't taste like butter. It's more like the rich smoothness, but it's not over the top, yeah. like a potato. You know, right. Potatoes are so overdone with when pairing with steak. I, I agree. I mean, it's delicious, but... Uh, well, it looks great. It doesn't accent the wine as well as something that's meant for it. But the butterbean uh, really balances out the celery root, too, so it's yeah. not over the top. You know, it's, the visual appeal alone makes me hungry, you know? <laughs> you <look laughs> of course. <laughs> so Because food and wine ap appeal to all of the senses, actually. You know? It does. The and visual, you know, yeah. That's why I became a chef. Right. Um, was because you know my parents tasted a lot of wine growing up, and they would drag us out to, to the Napa Valley, and uh, for them it was all about the experience. So I'm going to be resting these steaks in a little bit of rendered bone marrow. Again, you might not have that at the house, not mm -hmm. the end of the world, right? But if right. you have a handy, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, what's special about the bone marrow? Uh, the bone marrow has that uh, you know peppiness. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's like it's screaming for some black pepper. It's screaming for those components. So again, that's the Howl Mountain coming into there play. There you go, right? So the we're spiciness trying to, of yeah, the wine, yeah. Exactly. And of course, then the richness and the smoothness of the Rutherford as well. Oh, yeah. The Rutherford um, dust, as they the call Rutherford it. The yeah. Rutherford dust, which yeah. is that smooth, delicious cocoa powder. It's awesome. Okay, so as this rests, you know, as a chef, I, I have to insist, you've got to let your meat rest. Yes. Uh, all those juices inside, they get hot, they get boiling, they get simmering. Um, and they just need to chill out. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny how some of the same uh, techniques of uh, preparing food apply to wine. If wine has been moved around a lot, you need to let it rest. Yeah, right. So all the component parts come back together in perfect harmony. Same with the food, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You just need to do a little chill. Let yeah. Do its thing. Yeah. <sighs> this wine is amazing. Oh, it's phenomenal. Mm. Um, it's yeah, it's it's just phenomenal. The the vanilla, uh, the Madagascar vanilla coming off this from the aging it is incredible. The bramble berries, it's <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I like your descriptors there. You know, <sighs> before I forget, I won't wait till the end to say this. We are going to have dessert as well later, and that's going to be paired with the uh, the second wine of Trujillo, which is the Madeleine, and that's that's fantastic as well. But. I'm, ahead of, I'm getting ahead of myself because first <laughs> we need the, the main course. Of course. So for me, one of the most important concepts, components to the, to the steak is the sauce. Yes. Um, you know, one in doubt, your A1 steak sauce is fine. <laughs> it really is. It is. Uh, know. You know, it, it's, it's really acidic. It's full of tamarind mm -hmm. uh, and, and anchovies, and, and that's great. But for me, uh, at the end of the day, it's all about a good demi-glace. Yeah. Uh, demi-glace is made from concentration of reducing down the bones. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I actually take the pan that I sear my steaks in. After it's cooled down enough, you don't want to start cooking right away when it's still hot, because then you'll burn all your aromatics. So here we go. Then I hit it with some shallots. Yep, shallots first. Of course. Add a little bit of seasoning to everything as I go. Draws out the moisture, cooks evenly, and mm -hmm. adds layers of flavor. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, these are the king trump of mushrooms. Wow. Now, for me, if I was just having the Healy uh, by itself, man, I mean, mushrooms and demi glass would just be pretty, pretty awesome. Sounds like a meal in with itself. With that smooth, yeah. smooth, yeah. smooth wine. And even that alone would go well with the wine. But when you add the steak, I mean. I, exactly. Yeah. And this takes it to another level. Yeah. Which is really fun. Okay, so now that our steak has definitely had a little time to rest. Right. Just want to get a little of that excess love off of it, right? Just never too much love. <laughs> never too much love, but that, uh, yeah, we don't want to get too much bone marrow, right? So one for you, one for me. Okay. We'll go ahead and do yours first. It looks, yeah, well, I'm hungrier than you are, I think. <laughs> so I've been waiting longer. <laughs> exactly. Do you taste while you're cooking? Of course, that's why I'm not starving. Well, there, yes. <laughs> that's what I meant, see? <laughs> All right, so the mushrooms are sliced nice and thin, so they don't take very long to cook. Okay. Um, here so I have a local whole grain mustard from uh, oh, Garden yes. State Pick Works. This yes. is a local whole grain mustard. Um, again, more of that earthy terroir tone. Just right. a tiny bit, tiny bit. Yep. You don't want to ever add too much acidity uh, when you're pairing up with a cab because the cab's a big, big hard sale. I, I think we've given you a pretty good idea <laughs> of what this is all going to be like when it's all plated. <laughs> so we've got the great Trujillo wines. We've got the wonderful filet mignon on the bed of... This is the yep. celery root and celery butter root beans. Celery root and right. butter beans, right. 
And that was, oh, wow. Yeah, demi glass. Again, we made a little demi glass ahead of time. I'm going to have to take a lot of notes on how this <laughs> tastes so I can share it with you next time. Uh, but we're going to have a feast here. And then we get on to dessert as well. So, oh, of course. Let's raise our glasses and do a little toast here because dinner awaits us. Cheers. Thanks for being with us this time. We'll see you after dessert. 